Welcome to Tower and Tales Junior, a curated live play 5e Dungeons and Dragons podcast for kids and adults. In Tower and Tales Junior, we take a group of kids on a fantastical adventure full of friendship, adventure, and excitement using a modified 5e rule set. This podcast is created by and for kids. This is meant to be relatable and enjoyable. So let's see where they want to take the adventure today. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me. Through the wilderness and woods to where the winds are blowing free through the darkness of the night heading toward the morning light i wonder if you'd wander with me and i'll spread the word and you beat the drum we'll round up the troops and get the gang to come and we'll leave the street All right, roll your strikes with advantage because he's been distracted. How did you do? Did you beat a 22? Yes. Did you beat a 22, Malcolm? 25. Perfect. Then both of you hit and strike true and describe the smashing of your hammer into his foot. Basically, I just, I run as fast as I can uh, with my war hammer, uh, basically the handle uh, laying on my back, and then I go up to his foot and I uh bas- I uh try to hit uh him ba- directly where uh your toe and your foot connect connects right on the small toe. Okay. Cool. I love it. Smashes down. So not try to, but you do, right? I do. Yeah. Like you raise your hammer high, you smash it down upon the small toe where it connects and you hear a loud crack. As it breaks his toe. Oh. And Will, what does Flash do? I run up to his chest with my shocking grasp sword. Wow, okay. And I do like a sideways hold and I jab it into his chest. And then I use my shocking grasp on my sword. Cool. And so what happens to him when you do that? He takes lightning damage and thunder damage. Wow. Okay, so those things happen to him, and you can see a, you are showered in a wash of scales. You do not need to roll the damage. It's not really material. An ancient red dragon typically has 546 hit points, and while he has cast most of his spells and taken most of his damage, the damage you're doing right now is kind of immaterial to the, the conflict. What is being done, what we are announcing, though, is that you have hit him and you have done damage. What are you doing, Amethyst? I'm working on a blindness spell right now. Cool, you're going to blind him. Amethyst puts both of her hands up into the air and mutters the words, Classasone. Cool. I will roll my saving throw from your Classasone. He fails the check. I got a natural two. He fails the check and he begins to go blind. But because he's an ancient red dragon, he has the ability to just say, no, I succeed at a saving throw. And he can do that three times a day. But he's already done that three times today outside in the fight. So he ends up going blind. And this turquoise milky color from the spell that was cast by Amethyst covers his eyes with swirls. And he says, I can't see. Let's whack a mole up some more. <sighs> Zanengarth? What do you mean, Zanengarth? Let go of my tail! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, DJ? Do you let go of his tail? He commands you to let go of his tail. Yeah, I like. What? No, Why? I don't. DJ don't? does not let go. She starts to let go. Everyone can see it. Her stepdad has commanded her, and she starts to let go, but instead she doesn't. And are you going to give it another tug? Yes. Okay, give it another super tug. Roll with advantage. See if you can actually roll over 20 this time. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, 19. 19s are successes. Aren't 19 successes? Natural 19 is a critical for DJ, but not. So you give it a massive tug. Nothing happens. Is that because your strength is only plus four? Um, wait. What's your athletics check? Seven. Yeah, so it's your strength is plus four, right? Yeah. Okay, so you give it a massive tug 
does not come out. You feel a popping sound because you got so close, but you do not pull his tail free. And as a result, he is going to try to rip the tail from your grasp and fling you across the room. Make another strength check, please. Mm, I don't think he did it. I only got a 15. Did you beat a 15? Strength athletics? Yeah. Cool. What'd you get? 18. 18 is enough. He only got a 15. So you managed to hold on and you're not flung across the room. And he is going to then instead wing buffet Flamma and Flash. You have to both make athletic saving throws to not be knocked down. Is it now time to use your inspiration, Flash? Yeah, I want to be knocked down. To All right, so make your strength saving throws to not be knocked down as his wings try to buff it to throw you to the ground. You need to beat an 18. Did you do it? I got exactly 18. Wow, that's awesome. You did it. How did you do there, Flash? I take the higher one, right? Yeah. Yes, I got a 22. Holy moly, you have both succeeded and you're not thrown to the ground. You take a little bit of damage, but we're not really recording damage for this. And a Shardalon blind says, How dare you invoke the name of Xanangoth in here? I shall kill all who say his name. <laughs> you will let go of my tail immediately. Let's, let's all say Xanagarth. Yeah. Xanagarth. As soon as the blindness is up, I'm, I'm going to show the thing. But He looks like he's going to be blind for like a minute. She sends her final message. What are you going to say? We're going to bring up your weaknesses, no matter how hard you fight. Who are you? Zanigarth! You'll know us very well. I'll kill all of you. I will hunt you to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Let go of my tail! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no>. Never. <laughs> what? And guys, let me say... <sighs> he begins to sniff and smell around him, hunting for you all. It is all your turns, though. What would you like to do? Flamma, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to hit him in the same spot with my, my warhammer. All right, you have advantage on the strike. You have to beat a 22. Hit him again with your warhammer. What are you going to do there, Flash? Crack another toe. I'll hit him with my sword. So you're going to sma- slash him with your sword again. Roll, you got to beat a 22. What are you going to do, DJ? I'm going to grip his tail once more. Roll it up. And what are you going to do, Sasha? Will his blindness end this turn or not? No, his blindness is not going to end unless Amethyst takes the blindness down. She casts Major Illusion and this giant, like almost lifelike gold dragon probably the scariest thing you could imagine Uh because it's like of course this guy would be afraid of this it almost kind of towers above a shardalon and the golden scales shimmer as he's got like these black horns that extend and like curl down and this kind of smug look on him does he look like say that yeah just with black accents with black accents we actually had the D painted version. Mm-hmm. The ancient gold dragon of Xanangarth. Normally, Major Image cannot be a full gargantuan dragon, but there's something strange going on with you all that is allowing you to do something more than normal. And we'll get to that in a second. You cast the spell. <gasps> Everyone else now sees a giant gold dragon appear, pretty much where Flash and Flamma are. And she says, Amethyst, let him see it. Perfect. So you've done all of that. What words do you need to say in order to cast major image, Robin? Allowance of an illusion. Cool. And what are the draconic magical spell words for that? Habashash. Alashin. You may have inspiration again. Cool. That was really cool sounding. What are we doing next? I decide to take down the spell because it would have been a waste if I didn't because Sasha had done her cool image spell. Yeah. And since the rest of us are still very visible, invisibility. Mm, only in- Invisibility only will hit yeah, will one only, person. Yeah, right? actually. What yeah. is your most powerful spell? The most powerful spell I have. Would be your third level spell, right? So you're going to cast your level three spell? Yeah. Okay. Who are you going to cast it on? Well, obviously the 
Dragon. Yes. Ember. You're like, I'm trying to find the name, Kyle. I don't know it. I don't know the Everybody name, Everybody else has Kyle. been saying the name a million times. Ashardalon, the ancient red dragon. And what spell are you going to cast on him? The slow spell. So this spell is pretty powerful, hey? Especially on a dragon. Especially a dragon that uses its reaction to do lair actions and whatnot. And can do things on other people's turns like tail whip and whatnot. He hasn't been able to do so as of yet. So I'm going to roll my saving throw. And I have rolled a seven. <laughs> get wrecked. Get wrecked to Shardalon. And as a result, he has been slowed. So all of his voice and all of the things he says will go very, oh. how dare you? <laughs> He's been slowed. Zan and Garth appears. He doesn't even really realize that he has been slowed because he's just so afraid of Zan and Garth immediately that even the little bit of details that you may have gotten wrong about Zan and Garth, he doesn't notice right away because he's just wearing off the blindness. And that's when DJ pulls. And DJ this time got a... I got a 23. Your claws dig in. Your talons create furrows where the... What color of blood does a Shardalon have? Black. Black blood. Whoa. Where the Icarus black blood of a Shardalon wells out and you give a mighty heave. You turn, slinging his tail over your shoulder and take a step forward and your bulging quadricep muscles in your thighs flex mightily your muscles in your shoulders stand out and dj's giant eight pack of abdominal muscles flex as she bends and there is a loud snap pop and slurping sound Ooh. as dj rips a shardlon's tail right out of him he howls very slowly. <laughs> and you all make fun of his cry? Is that what you were just doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. How dare you? Zan and Garth! Now, Sasha would like to control Zan and Garth. You can use your action to make Zan and Garth do things. What would you like to do? She said she, in Zan and Garth's voice. Okay. But what she thinks sounds like that. Why not? Says, I am very disappointed in you, brother. Nice. You're going to have to make a deception check. I mean, of course, you're using this and casting message to do this. You can use your action to have Flamma and Flash attack and pretend that those are the paws, the arms. Actually, that would be awesome. You can do that too, Robin. I'm okay with that in this moment. Yay! Flamma, you are suddenly the left hand of Zan and Garth, or so it appears to everyone else. You're standing inside, and your Warhammer is the fist of Zan and Garth. What would you like to do? I don't know. Are you going to hit a Shardalon? Well, where would you, as the fist, the hand, the talons of Zan and Garth, where would you hit him? In the face? In the chest? Rake one of his wings? What would you want to do? In another one of his toes. You smash another foot again? <laughs> just moving up the toes with your big fist. Do you want to describe that, or is that good enough? Describe it. I can describe okay. it. Sure. Zan and Garth punches his foot foot with one of his fists and like gets up really close to him cool i like it and of course inside the fist it's actually flamma himself with his warhammer and flash what are you gonna do the right arm of xan and garth i'm gonna stab him in his chin oh and it's gonna look like he rakes him with his claws in the face x perfect yes make an athletics check just for the jump i want to just see how amazing and theatrical the jump is roll that up so not a very theatrical jump, hey? Like yeah. a 10 or so? So you I'm jump like, up, but you do get it and you slap him in the face or so it looks the, like to the everyone. The claws else. just start like stretching his his head, the fingers. Cool. And of course you do the thunder damage and it knocks his head to the side and he goes, oh. <laughs> 
What do you do with the tail, DJ? You could whip him with it. Whip. Whip. I'm going to turn around and hit him with it in the back. You slap him with his own tail? <laughs> yes. <sighs> I love it. <laughs> so you spin more and the tail, which is huge. It's a giant tail for a giant ancient red dragon. And you use it like a whip and you yeah. bring it down upon his back. Roll and with advantage a strike just to see what this is like. Just so you know, you are coated in the black Icarus blood of a Shardalon and you feel an itching coming from the base of your spine dj a terrible itch right at the base of your spine that's all how did you do on your roll 19 that is was it a natural 19 uh no oh okay a 19 is not enough you just kind of glancing blow him remember you need to beat a 22 on an attack he thumps the ground with his forearm with his hand crying out and then he sees the three of you and he does he sees inside of you for some reason he sees sasha and he looks into sasha's chest and he says no the methuselah how where you as well (laughs) there is more than one shot of the methuselah it is gone what's gone and his eyes fall upon dj ashardalon tail in hand as he turns from Xanangarth, of whom he is most deeply afraid. He sees the shard of the Methuselah inside of you as well, and he says, No, DJ, you would turn against me, your own father. Told you. (laughs) DJ would be like, Stepfather. (laughs) And then, boof. Yes, what you are doing is wrong. The world needs to be controlled, and only I can control it. A huge gout of blood comes from where his tail has been ripped free. My displacia! Xanangarth slaps him a couple more times, because that's what Flamma and Flash are up to. You see that a Shardalon has called DJ his daughter. The ancient red dragon has a daughter of a purple dragonborn. The Methuselah is dead. Yep. Yes. And it chose you? We did meet your parent figure. What? So. That's how you knew about my tail. Yes. Is, yes. sh- is Xanagoth even here? I mean. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, sure. of course he is here. Yeah, he is, of course, here. Oh, no. I can't be defeated. <laughs> he begins to cast a spell. Kandar, one day. He's casting it at a higher level. Are you able to still cast Counterspell, Sasha? Or do you want to let it happen? It is the exact same spell he was casting before. It is once again sending. Who is he sending to? Kashnar. So you do attempt to cast it. Roll a d20. Oh, by the way, I can make him fail too. Oh, you didn't roll it. Did you roll your divinity checks? How did you do, Robin? 416. Yeah, I'm going to use that 16 now. I got a three. So you rolled a three on the check, and then you've rolled a 16 natural as your divinity checks? Yeah. Okay. So you have seen the future. The spell is held in check, and he cries out, No! Yes! How dare you turn against me, DJ? She turned against you the day she left. Who are you? People who actually care about her. I cared. I cared more than anyone else ever. Where? You locked her up, abused her. You were the worst thing that happened to her. I showed her the world and how terrible it is, full of chaos and depredations, and I will fix it. I will make the world Bow before me. I am the only one who knows what is right. I am the only one who can show them the path. The world will bend to my will. No. No one will bend if you can't hold compassion in your heart. For at least someone who thought you were their ally. He breathes in deeply. You see the glow of fire, light, 
in his throat as he attempts to breathe fire upon all of you. But he's exhausted because he's fought for hours against the Lord's own above. And all that comes out is a gout of smoke that obscures your vision. And as he does so, he attempts one last time to cast a spell. I'll let it go through. He casts the spell sending and says the words, bring it down. What? (laughs) Bring what down? (laughs) And that, of course, leads all of you to shock and confusion. Uh, What down? And nothing happens initially. (laughs) Do you continue to strike and beat at a Shardalon? He does not seem to be making attacks against you. He seems slumped, defeated, weakened, (gasps) like he has lost. I know what he means. I know what he means. The Moonstone. Maybe. The Moonstone's effect has kind of already been done. It was against Tiger Claw, less, shard- less so a Shardalon in this instance here. As he looks at DJ and he says, If you flee, if you manage to get away, you will carry forth my name, and you are all that will remain in this world as a mark of my presence. For I am a Shardalon, and you were my chosen heir. You were the one I had chosen. You were the one who was special. You were the one who was to take it all when I was done. You are my greatest success and my deepest failure. And by the way, yes, you may die today. I don't understand. What do you mean by you chose me to take it all? The greatness inside of you is the same greatness in me. It is the greatness of rebellion, the greatness of superior vision and strength of limb, and there is no other on this plane. I would trust more with my life. So to know it is you that end it (coughs) is great solace. And when he says the word solace, a rumble rolls across the ground as it heaves and tosses and the giant vault above with the huge opening begins to collapse down upon you. Holy. What are you going to do? Uh, run. 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 Jump. <laughs> I'll give you a backpack while you run. I don't think there are any hairy vines in this dungeon. <laughs> Swing, no, swing but, from a Shardalon. But unknown to the five of you, the dragon priests of a Shardalon are down below casting a terrible ritual to destroy the citadel, create a huge rift in the earth to like bring down the uh, the armies of the Lord's own Menzoberanzan and Tanjika and kill everyone. And you are at the epicenter of this right here. A Shardalon cannot get out of here. He's trapped. If that opening in the roof collapses, as it is doing right now, he will not be able to get free. He knows he is about to die. He tries to trap one of you with him, and I will randomly determine that as you all begin to flee from the dungeon. My note here is... Get out of here. The whole place is coming down. He like power dies and gas too. So he begins to bring this place down. Do any of you have any spells or abilities or anything that could help you get out of here faster? I have fly. Yes, fly would make you go faster to get out of the area for sure. What else? Can I give my... Do I have it? Mm. Expeditious retreat? Yes! Yeah, that'll definitely help you. Anybody else got any spells or abilities? Hey, does DJ wear a particular pair of boots? (gasps) DJ, you actually have to wear your boots this time. (laughs) (laughs) I think she always does. They're just kind of like leg wrappings for her, right? I have my magic purple boots. I don't have anything that's going to help, so I'm just going to cast silence. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just going to cast silence. I love it. Makes it all quiet as the world falls down. <laughs> well, <laughs> expeditious retreat is cast. DJ's boots come in handy. Fly is cast. There's a little gnome, though. A little courageous, chaotic gnome who you all knew back in the days of the Lord's Own, 
who seems to be slower than everybody else. Jump on my back. And Flamma is just a normal guy moving at his normal speed. He doesn't have have anything special as well. Are you going to cast Fly on one person? Because you've already cast Counterspell three times. <laughs> How many more spell slots do you have left? Counterspell is a third level spell. I can't cast anything else. So can you even cast Fly? No. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're gonna die. I run up and- However, you have the Moonstone, and the Moonstone can allow you to cast one third level spell. Sure, why not? So you can cast Fly one time. Okay, so that means you can't cast Fly, and you begin to run from the room. A Charlon is going to attempt to grab at one of you. I have a D6 in my hand here. You're a number one. You're a two. You're a three. You're four. You're five. Six is he does nothing. He goes with a five. So he's going to lash out with his claw and try to grab Amethyst as she climbs onto the back of Flash as the five of you attempt to flee. I only have to beat your armor class, which is a 13. And he's big red dragon. So if he rolls a four or less, he doesn't grab you. If he rolls more than four, he will grab Amethyst. And we'll go from there. I have a four right here. So he fails. Potentially. I've rolled a natural 15 to yeah, grab yeah, Amethyst. Yeah, 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 he fails. He fails. So you use your four. Four. <laughs> he fails to grab Amethyst, and all of you flee as quickly, as fastly as you can. But, Flamma, you have to make an athletics check in order to get out of the building, because at some point there's some sort of terrible thing, like a cliff you have to jump, or a ramp you have to run along, or some sort of wall you have to spring up and clamber up in order to get out. And because you do not have boots of elven kind, you do not have fly, you do not have expeditious retreat, you have to roll the die, and you are making an athletics check. What's your athlete plus to athletics? Six. So you're plus six to athletics. So in order to succeed at this, you need to beat an 15 in order to succeed. And you have done so. And so therefore, you manage to get out. No one else has to roll because you all have devices that enable you to get out and free. And she's on top of me. And she's clutching the back of Flash. So Flash can make the athletics check because we do need to have one here, but you have advantage on the check and you just need to be a 15, which is super easy. So not too awkward. Is that a 15? I have a plus six. So yeah, I, I definitely. Okay, perfect. So then we have managed to get free. You're standing outside as the cavern suddenly appears as this citadel the spire collapses into the earth. It will be lost in time. Other adventurers down the road will seek to find their way into this sunless citadel of a Shardalon because the sun does not shine there ever again. Those adventurers oh. will discover weird comments about DJ Ashardalon, the purple dragonborn. They will find evidence of the dragon priests of Ashardalon, the humans and elves who sought to become draconic and therefore became trolls. <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough, they will encounter kobolds and goblins and bugbears and an ancient evil druid who attempts to take over the world from within this denizen, this dungeon. But you are all standing on the edge, dirty, dusty, bloody, covered in the ashen blood of a Shardalon himself. When Sasha, you notice something strange growing out of the back of DJ. DJ, what's that on your back? What are you talking about? There's something weird. It's like, huh, growing? What? Yeah, you need to see this. I did think there was going to be something about um, when uh, you were maybe clawing onto his tail. I mean, my back was starting to itch once I ripped his tail off. You're itching terribly now, DJ. It's itching really bad. What's going on? Uh, Is there something inside us? you? What do you do? Rip it off. <laughs> that would just hurt. Uh, DJ starts like trying to scratch it because of how bad it itches yeah there's something weird like a tumor or something growing <laughs> out of the the back of the base of your spine it's growing as you touch it and it feels like your spine is connected to it as you think 
you may have earned your tail, which is a great dragonborn feat that very few dragonborn ever achieve, where they grow their tail. It's a tour. <laughs> and now you start itching it some more. DJ has a tail. DJ, you somehow have a tail now. Doesn't really look like that yet, yet, but it definitely feels like maybe that's what's happening. It kind of looks like a tail. Other amazing things begin to happen. Sasha's fur begins to glow slightly as her true name, her adult name, her leader name is imbued upon her. And she becomes, what was your character's name going to be at the end when you achieve your leader status? Because we all know how Tiger Claw would have become Tiger Star if he'd gotten away with all of his things. What did, what is the name for Sasha? Moonstar. Moonstar. Sasha Moonstar. She becomes, and when the moon shines, her Fur glows silver in the moonlight, and Flash with his cool new sword, and Flama with his new breath. <laughs> Just another day at the office. Hi. <laughs> Actually, let's go to the teleporter. And that is it for the Wrath of a Shardalon Tavern Tales Junior's first campaign. I'm Kyle, and I hope you have all enjoyed this. And one last thing, if you all wanted to. We are going to do an epilogue next time we get together, which will be another episode of this show. Uh, just would like to know what you thought of the game, what your favorite parts of the game were. So give it some thought over the next little while here over the winter break before we come back again in January. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Tavern Tales Jr. Dun dun! Wow! Dun dun! Dandy! <laughs> You're wondering if I go wandering with you. What kind of trouble we'll get ourselves into? Would it be wrong to tag along with a band of vagabonds? You wonder if I'd wander with you. So I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales Jr. We'll be back in one month with a brand new episode. Our intro and outro music is Through the Woods by Okie Dokie Brothers. Find their music on iTunes by checking them out at www.okidoki.org and follow them on Twitter at Okie Dokie Bros. We love a review on iTunes. Check us out on Twitter. Tavern underscore tales. See you all later. I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way. If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray. The music of the pack can always bring you back. I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. And we'll leave the streets in these neighborhoods Head over the river